he wrote for his tombstone, John Newton, once an infidel and libertine, a servant of slaves in Africa, was by the rich mercy of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ preserved, restored, pardoned, and appointed to preach the faith he had long labored to destroy. I can relate to that. Probably the thing that, that brought me the closest to wanting to research historical ministers is the fact that we live 15 miles, as the crow flies, from the site of the beginning of the Second Great Awakening in 1800. The First Great Awakening took place with uh, Jonathan Edwards and George Whitfield and such uh, in uh, about 1735. This uh, 1740, that was uh, before John Newton even became a Christian. And, and that, that event there in, in Logan County, Kentucky, uh, spurred my interest. And so I started digging. I started digging into what was going on in the world that would bring a revival as significant as either the First or the Second Great Awakenings. My favorite minister in history, I have a lot that I can choose from. I can choose from George Whitfield, uh, Jonathan Edwards, uh, John or Charles Wesley, uh, John Gill, many, many others. John Flavel, although he's from uh, the century before. But so many, so many wonderful ministers. But John, John Newton, I find to be a very, very genuine. Not that the others aren't, but, but John's experiences, his life experiences that brought him to the place of, of who God created him to be uh, are very, very, very important. And I can relate in some ways uh, to, to John Newton. John Newton's story uh, really attracted me because we can see a very, very clear-cut example of, of, of a person who, who realizes that, that, that his, his, his life was, was very inadequate. That, and, and he tried literally everything to, to be a satisfaction for, for who he was. For, for, uh, deep down inside, we all, we all want happiness. We want, we want pleasure, things of that nature. And, and John, John tried this. And when John Newton... Uh, there before his death and, and many times in, in the second half of his life declared that he was, he was a blasphemer, he was a, he was a reprobate, uh, and that the change that happened in his life happened because God intervened there. And, and to be able to tell that story is, is so very important to me. John Newton was born on July 24th of 1725, old style because that was before the calendar changed from the, the, the Julian calendar to our, to our modern, modern calendar. We lost, lost 11 days. So in our calendar, his birthday would be August the 4th. And, and John Newton always, always counted time in, in the old style because his conversion took place on the 10th of March in, in 1748. And that calendar change didn't happen, I think, until 1752. John Newton's childhood was, was a very happy childhood. The first seven years, his mother died about, just about a month before he was seven years old. His mother taught him, taught him scripture, taught him to read. At three years old, John Newton, John Newton was learning to read. At four, he says he could read any book except for the hard words. So this is the foundation that, that John Newton had. His father was a, was a sea captain. Uh, a seafaring man, and John is going to go to sea with him uh, at the age of, of 11. He's going to serve before the mast. He was uh, seven or so voyages uh, before the time that he was, he was 17 years old. But that, that event of, of the death of his mother and the remarriage of his father about the time that he was 11 uh, was it was a traumatic time for John and and he he finds himself slipping further and further away from the faith that his mother rooted him in that foundation of, of this is this is right and this is wrong his father was a very moral man but he was somewhat detached there at 17 years old John is starting to to test things, well, even as 12 and 13 years old, he, he, becomes, he becomes attracted to the less than desirable aspects of, of society. 
and and he and he starts experimenting there. John, throughout his life, he experimented with asceticism. He thought, you know, if I if I can if I can just do away with everything worldly, and 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 I can make myself into a better person. He attempted uh, the occult and and things of that nature as as a way of of finding himself. At 17, his father determined that he's going to settle him in a position. So he finds him a place in uh, Jamaica, uh, a, a position there in Jamaica with his father's friends. And and John is, okay, I'll, I'll do that. At this point, he's just kind of, whatever, I'll, I'll do it. So he has to go to Kent, uh, a town nearby, so that, so that he can settle some business for his father. And on the way to Kent, he receives an invitation from a family that he hasn't seen in a number of, a number of years. This, this family were, uh, were acquaintances of, of, his, of his mother. And in fact, his mother died at, at their, their house. When he knocks upon the door, uh, a young woman opens the door uh, and John is, is, is smitten. Uh, love at first sight, this becomes, this becomes his, his attraction and actually becomes a very steadying force in John's life. Uh, this is one, one anchor that he, that he had that through all the things that he got into in later years, this is one, one thing that brought him back to sanity, that, that kept him from harming himself on, on various occasions. He was supposed to only be there four days. He delays himself by a couple of weeks. He misses his boat. He does not get the appointment to go to Jamaica to earn a fortune. And instead, on his way back from, from Kent, he is impressed and put upon a, a, a ship named the Harwich. And there he is impressed as, as a sailor. Now, he's already proven himself to be untrustworthy. So he, he constantly relies upon his father to bail him out of the mistakes that he's making. And his father comes and, and realizes where he is, that he doesn't have the power to get him off the ship. And, but he does convince the captain to, to make him a midshipman, which means he's an officer. He's not before the mast as, as, as such, but he, is, he has, has some, some authority. But John, John, being an impetuous young man of 17, nearly 18 now, he wants none of it. And he becomes more vile and more vile as, 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 as the time goes goes on. He, he truly becomes that, becomes that wretch. He's, he's such a man that the first opportunity the captain of the Harwich has to get rid of Newton is when a slaving ship comes alongside and wants to trade sailor for sailor. And so Newton finds out that he has an opportunity to get off this ship, so he lobbies and was able to, to become one of the two that were traded to the slaving ship. But the captain, the captain was glad to see him go. And in fact, a similar situation is going to take place very, uh, not in not too distant future, that he is, again, such a, such a man. He is, he, is, he is a drunkard. He is, he is uh, vile in any way that you can imagine. And even that captain is glad to be rid of him to trade him off to a person that's in the business there in, in, in Africa. He, if he finds himself in Africa at about age 18, and he, and he goes into the, into the slaving business, but, he, but he, he, does it, he does it with a, how can I say it, with, with, with a gusto. He is, he is, he is purposeful in, in wanting to rebel. If I had a word to say uh, that would typify John Newton, it would be rebellion. During that time, is able to write a couple of letters to his father. He's able to send a couple of letters to his intended, dear Mary, and would become Mrs. Newton later. He had to have these letters smuggled out. And then his father determines that I'm going to provide one more rescue for my son. So he contacts a ship owner, says, I know you've got a ship going to the west coast of Africa. Will you look for my son, John? And that captain is, is sailing. The, book, the name of the ship is the Greyhound. The Greyhound is, is the ship that, that Newton is on when, uh, during his conversion. 
And, and the Greyhound doesn't, doesn't immediately uh, go from, from Africa back to, back to England. But that journey from Africa back to England was about 7,000 miles. So they came over to Brazil, they came up the coast to Newfoundland, and then, and then they're, and then they're off, off into, the, into the North Atlantic. And it's there on March the, March the 9th of 1748, old style, that, that, that Newton goes to bed that night thinking, well, things are going to, going to be okay. I, I'm, I'm heading back home, and, and there had to be a little bit of a, a little bit of a peace, perhaps in his soul. March the 10th, he is awakened from a sound sleep. The storm has hit the ship. It has destroyed one side of the ship. He said his cabin was, was filling with water. He was in the captain's cabin, so we know that was, was a prime place on, on the ship. And, and Newton is, is brought into service on that ship. He mans the pumps. He pumps the pumps for hours on end. Instead of going back to, to rest, nobody rested, uh, he, went, he went to the helm. And again, for a, for a long stretch of several hours, I think about 12 hours, he was, he was there on, on the helm piloting the, the, the craft. Uh, the captain comes to him and Newton says something to the effect of, but for the grace of God, we would all perish. And Newton prays during that time. He said that prayer that day on the Greyhound was a raven's prayer. What does a raven do? But a raven lets out a squawk. And, and that's all Newton could do. It's as if he said, help. So, so these, are, these are things that are, that are going to, to play in his mind. I once was lost, but now I'm found. March the 10th of 1748, old style, is March 21st on our calendar. So Newton always celebrated that. A year didn't pass between then and then his, his death in 1807 that he did not celebrate March the 21st or March the, the 10th old, old style. Grace is receiving what we don't deserve. Mercy is not receiving what we do deserve. But he's talking about the grace, the grace that, 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 that literally saved his life, saved the lives of, of, of most of those there on, on the ship. That amazing grace. Again, I, I can't say that, that fervently enough. At 1757, just a few years, few years after, Newton becomes an Anglican. A priest and an Anglican minister. John Newton was a prolific writer. He was, he was a, he was a poet. Uh, he wrote a number of hymns. He wrote a number of, he co-wrote a number of hymns with William Cooper. Uh, his most famous hymn is not his most famous hymn. His most famous hymn, as far as we're all concerned, is Amazing Grace. And, and this is a, this is a hymn that we've all grown up hearing. We hear it on the bagpipes. It was it was played at, at, at the, the funerals of royals. It was uh, any, any special occasion. Uh, we, hear, we hear the tune of Amazing Grace. But the words of Amazing Grace were written in, in 1771 and introduced to the public in 1772. He always wrote a hymn because his congregation was made up of illiterate lace makers. They're in Olney, England, O-L-N-E-Y, Olney, -E Olney, England. And, and, and so he would write a song so that they could understand what the, what the sermon, better understand what the sermon was about. And this sermon came from, from the book of 1 Chronicles. Uh, it has to do with, with King David not being able to, to, build, to build the temple because of the wretched man that he was. And I won't go into, into all of that, but, but, but John Newton's points were, look back to see where you've come from, look around to see where you are, and look forward to see where you're going. Amazing grace, and then it's a parenthetical statement. Amazing grace, how, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. And, and, and these words that have, that, have, that have played on our minds so, so often. Uh, John Newton goes home that Sunday afternoon and writes in his diary something to the effect of, I, was, I felt strangely unmoved by the service today. And I'm going to redouble my efforts in prayer for what I have to do for, 
for tonight. John Newton introduces the hymn that is probably the number one, the most famous hymn in the world, bar none. And he goes, well, I guess that was a turkey. Didn't feel anything out of that one. And actually, the hymn was not popular even in England until Janis Joplin makes it, popularizes it. The tune that we sing to, and this is a little aside, the tune we sing it to wasn't put together with it until 1831. So we don't know what tune was, was sung there in, in that church on January 1st of 72. But when he says amazing grace that saved a wretch like me, John Newton is remembering. And, and, and many of us, many of us look back and we can, we can remember the, the things that we've gone through. We can remember the, the good times and the bad times. And for some reason, it seems that the bad times are a whole lot more prevalent than, than the good times. He wrote letters. He wrote letters to young men that were, were going to be ministers. He wrote letters to grieving mothers that had lost children. He wrote letters to his associates. He wrote letters to believers. He wrote letters to non-believers. He wanted this message to be, to be proclaimed. And 1748, how old is he? He's 22. He's 22 and he has already gone through all the things that he has gone through. That, that previous 10 years uh, were, were significant and, and, and formative and nearly destructive to Newton. So here in this occasion, he sees this thing, this, this ship nearly, nearly sinking. The ship is, the ship is saved after a, a period of days through many dangers, toils, and snares. I have already come. Newton says, look back. Where, where, where has he, where has he been? He says, tis grace that has brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home. He never hides where he came from. He always is, that is, that is up, up front. He, he, doesn't, he doesn't look back. You know, the Lord, the Lord says to us that, that he who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is not fit for the kingdom of heaven. And, and, and I often wonder, what does that mean? Well, well, John Newton did look back, but he looked back to know where he had come from and where God had brought him and that, that grace, that amazing grace. Oh, how sweet the sound had indeed been his been his salvation. Now, if he had looked back and thought, now I'm going to circle back around, and I, I really like that time I spent in Africa, and he did there the last couple of months. But, but he said, maybe, maybe I can get that feeling again. That's where we're not, we're not worthy. But this was a change that changed his life uh, going forward. The Lord has promised good to me, he says in the fourth verse of his hymn, his word my hope secures. He will by shield and portion be as long as life endures. You know, John Newton, just before he died, uh, he was asked several questions. Now, at, at this point, by 1807, 1806, 1807, he is a, he is a revered, respected pastor there, there in England. He goes from Olney to, to another church in London uh, where he spends the rest of his, rest of his time as, as, as their, their minister. But, but he, is, uh, he gradually loses his eyesight. And, and someone asks him there within weeks of his death, he says, uh, you know, about his faith. And he says, he says, my memory is nearly gone. But I can remember two things. That I am a great sinner, but Christ is a great Savior. And there that, that grace, that amazing grace, is, is what, what completed that. And that is is the long story of why I like John Newton. He is, he is, 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 is open. We, we talk about transparency. He is very, very transparent. Amazing grace, it's not his crowning achievement, but it, it's what we know him best for. And I would invite people to, 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 look, to look a little deeper. Uh, and, and as I've, I've tried to relate in, in this is to to look at, look at what, what came behind uh, and, and follow, follow along with, with, with his, his sermon on January 1st of 72. Where, where have you come from? Where are you now? And where are you going?